Hey guys, this is Mac again, and welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate you joining me for today's episode of the Three Gun Project. Today we got episode two. I hope you enjoyed the first episode where we built our lower receiver from start to finish. Today we're going to be working on our upper receiver. We're going to start with that Wilson Combat billet upper and work it around our Stretch 16 Melanite barrel. So stay tuned. That's what's next in today's episode of the Three Gun Project. This Wilson Combat Billet upper receiver comes as a match set with the lower receiver and is machined from Billet T6 aluminum. I particularly like this upper receiver because it has a deleted forward assist which is unnecessary in the game of 3-gun and saves weight. It also has standard M4 feed ramps and a smoother interior profile for better cycling of your bolt and it weighs just a mere 9.3 ounces. Again, I've had this set Cerakoted in Urban Bronze by Strongside Tactical. To get started on assembly of this upper receiver group, first I'll install the port door or the dust cover. I'm using a lightweight version from V7 Weapon Systems along with their straight lightweight port door rod. This is a fairly straightforward install, however installation of the spring can sometimes be challenging. So I do like to test fit these products before I do the installation of the spring. And I found the best luck if you install the rod through the first half of the dust cover and then lay the long leg of the spring down into the slot on the dust cover and then twist the short leg of the spring backwards. Then the real test is to hold the spring in place while you continue to advance the rod all the way through the dust cover. Now this Wilson Combat Upper has a particularly beefy area at the front edge of the dust cover so that you do not have to use the standard C-clip that is typically used on M4 style dust covers. Again this is a really lightweight dust cover or port door and it engages very nicely with this billet upper. Next I will put together my bolt carrier group. My favorite bolt carrier is the JP LMOS or lightweight carrier. Uh, this is quite a bit lighter than their standard M4 profile or full auto version bolt carrier. This is a really great option for three gun competition. And I've typically been using this bolt carrier in my three gun rifle for the past three years. This is the QPQ finished version. I also have used their polished version and they both cycle really easily in your rifle. This year I'm going to be using the Lewis Machine and Tool or LMT Enhanced Bolt. This one comes with a double extractor system which you can see here with the mermaid shaped extractor on the side of the bolt. You can see that the bolt is slightly dirty and that's because all of LMT's bolts are test fired extensively at the factory to ensure proper function. Now when installing a bolt in a bolt carrier, you want to make sure that your extractor is facing the right side of the rifle where the dust cover and the ejection port are on your upper receiver. And once you have the bolt facing in the appropriate direction, then you can install the cam pin. This cam pin is manufactured by V7 Weapon Systems. It's a lightweight version and you'll notice that there's some weight taken out of the middle of the cam pin. This one is melanite finished to ensure long life and proper function and it's a really high quality piece. Once you install the cam pin you'll want to extend the bolt into its open position that way you can install your firing pin and your firing pin retainer. The firing pin I'll be using in this bolt carrier group is manufactured by V7 Weapon Systems and it is a lightweight titanium firing pin. This is lighter than standard and also should contribute to longevity. This year I'll be trying the KNS Precision Permapin firing pin retainer. This is a high quality piece that 
replaces the standard cotter pins that are used to retain the firing pin in standard bolt carrier groups. It installs very easily just by pressing it through the hole to retain the firing pin in the back of the bolt carrier group. Next is the centerpiece of this upper receiver group. This is the Stretch 16, 16 inch barrel from Stretch Precision finished with melanite. Now last year I did run the Elite Red fluted version in my three gun rifle and it's a fantastic barrel. This year I was very excited to try out the melanite version as it has been known to function with great longevity because of the melanite finish and to also have the same guaranteed accuracy of all the stainless steel barrels from Stretch Precision. This version is fluted coming in at 31 ounces which is quite a bit lighter than a lot of standard 16 ounce precision barrels and also the 18 inch barrels that are routinely used in 3-gun. When installing any barrel into an upper receiver you do want to use some anti-seize or some sort of weapons grease. I've always had very good luck with this extreme weapons grease that I use so I'll just put a little bit on the barrel extension and even it out all the way around the barrel before inserting it into the upper receiver. There's a very nice fit between this Wilson Combat upper and the barrel extension on my Stretch 16 barrel. And now I'll install the barrel nut. The barrel nut that I'm using comes standard with a Noveski NSR handguard system. This is a two-sided barrel nut which has index holes in a 360 degree pattern around the barrel nut. You do need to do some test fitting to figure out which end of the barrel nut you're going to need to use. And basically the way that you do this is to just tighten the barrel nut down by hand and try to find the appropriate tightness where your index hole aligns at the 1130 position. That way when you tighten down the barrel nut with the wrench, you'll appropriately index these holes at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. Now I've used this handguard system on many rifles that I've owned and it is my favorite handguard system. It's very robust and does allow for a really good accuracy out of the barrel. This is the Noveski proprietary barrel nut wrench that I used with this barrel nut. I'll initially torque this down to a value of about 45 foot-pounds and then check for the proper index. Notice I do season the threads by tightening and loosening the barrel nut several times, usually at least three times, before then finally torquing down to a final value of approximately 80 foot-pounds. Torque values on the upper end of the expected range usually have been shown to show a little bit better accuracy potential, so I usually try to get my barrel nut torqued down to somewhere around 70 to 80 foot-pounds. Here I'm just checking for the appropriate indexing of that top hole. Next I'll install my gas tube and my gas block. This is the Sentry 7 adjustable gas block from SLR Rifle Works. It's my favorite gas block and one that I've used on at least three or four of my rifles and always on my three gun rifles. You'll notice also that the gas tube is intermediate length as all stretch 16 barrels do come with the intermediate length gas system for softer shooting. To install this clamp-on style gas block, I'll just tighten down one of the screws before then taking the second one out and applying Loctite. Once I'm sure that everything's lined up appropriately, then I'll Loctite both screws. And I'll just use hand tightness on these screws as I don't want to over torque them and potentially break them. Now that our gas block and barrel nut are installed, I can slip on the Noveski NSR handguard system. This is a free float handguard system with an inner diameter of 1.35 inches, which is enough clearance to clear this SLR Rifle Works gas block without any interference. I'm going to test fit the handguard system first by temporarily installing all of these retention screws at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions with Loctite. Before then, I make sure that the upper rail is completely aligned and then finally torquing them down. 
I typically use blue Loctite on all of my AR-15 rifle projects because it still is possible to break these screws loose by hand. If you do use red Loctite, you will be required to use heat to break the screws loose. And since I do a lot of changing out of parts on my rifles, I prefer blue Loctite. Another trick that I routinely employ is to use an optics mount to bridge the gap between the upper receiver and the handguard system to ensure that the upper rails are aligned. Then I will finally torque down all of the screws with a wrench. Also, I'd like to note that I do leave a small gap between the upper receiver and the handguard system to ensure that there's no undue force on the barrel extension, which could cause stringing and a loss of accuracy in your barrel. And again, hand tightness is good enough for these screws. You don't want to over torque them and potentially strip them out. And once I'm finished torquing down my handguard, I can remove the optics mount. Final step is the installation of our muzzle device. Again, this year I'll be using the Rise Armament RA701 muzzle device. I had really good success with this muzzle device at the end of last three gun season and would like to continue using it this year. It does a fantastic job of mitigating recoil on this rifle. So after installing my crush washer, I'll hand tighten down the device and then torque it to the appropriate index point with my wrench. You'll also notice that I am using a receiver clamp device in my vise. You can also use reaction rods, such as the Geisley reaction rods, which are known to be best for installation of these types of devices. However, I've always had good luck using this inexpensive receiver block. The proper index point for this muzzle device is with the Rise Armament logo underneath and with the five circular exhaust ports on the top end of the muzzle device. Now that I've finished assembly of this upper receiver, I'll inspect everything to make sure that everything's tight, make sure that my upper rails are completely lined up, and now install both my charging handle and my bolt carrier group. Again this year I'll be utilizing a Bravo Company Manufacturing Mod 4 charging handle. I've always had really good success with these gunfighter charging handles, so I use them in all my rifles. And after installing both of those parts, I'll install it onto my lower receiver and now I have my completed rifle. On first impression, I really am impressed with how light this rifle is. I think part of that is due to the V7 weapon system's lightweight parts as all of these small parts tend to add up and that is a lot of unnecessary weight when the V7 parts are of such high quality. Even with this TR24 scope mounted in a LaRue mount, this rifle weighs in at six and three quarter pounds, which by typical three gun rifle standards is quite light. With a loaded magazine, I expect it to weigh about seven and a quarter pounds. This is even lighter than my rifle from 2015, and I'm really excited about getting this out and trying it. From front to back, this is just an extremely beautiful rifle. The Cerakote on the upper and lower receivers is a really fantastic color. The Urban Bronze from Strongside Tactical really sets this rifle apart. Coupled with the black furniture, I couldn't imagine a better looking rifle to shoot 3-gun this year. So I hope you enjoyed that build of that upper receiver using my Wilson Combat stripped upper and my Stretch 16 Melanite barrel. This one's been a little bit different. You know, I build a lot of uppers here on my channel, but the quality in all of the parts in this one is just a step above. I really am so excited about this rifle. And I can't wait to get it out and test fire it. And that's what's going to be coming up next in part three, the conclusion of the three gun project. We're going to select a new optic for this coming year for this rifle. And also we're going to take it out, test fire it, run it through its paces and zero it and just see what kind of quality we can get out of this rifle. So make sure you stay tuned for the conclusion of the three gun project. And thanks again for joining me for today's video. Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel, and I really hope you enjoyed today's video. To subscribe for more video content every week, click the video right here.
To watch more videos just like the one you saw today, click this video right here. Once again, this is Mac. Be safe out there. We'll see you next time.